Hey everyone, my name is John Harari, CEO and co-founder of Windowsware, and I want to invite absolutely everyone here today uh, to join us on Windowsware Live. Uh, Windowsware Live is an opportunity where we showcase uh, some of the human beings and some of the companies and the creatives that make our industry come to life. Uh, Windowsware is a resource that is used by over 25,000 members from all around the world. And we absolutely love uh, to showcase all the projects and all the creativity and all the inspirations that come from our industry from all around the world. And uh, we like to make sure that we highlight that content on our site, obviously by making posts, uh, posting projects, showcasing the visuals, showcasing all the beauty that is taking place of our industry around the world. Uh, but as, as you know, the images are just one component and obviously behind every project, uh, everything that this industry creates is, is, is a story behind the scenes and, and the people behind the scenes. And this is an opportunity for us to uh, get to learn about who are the creatives behind all these brands and uh, to learn firsthand from them and to really explore uh, who they are and what they do. Uh, this uh, afternoon, we are very honored to have uh, Hervé Levenant, who is the head of visual merchandising at Delvo. And before uh, being head of visual merchandising at Delvo, he's also served uh, as an executive uh, in, at, at creative roles at other brands, including JM Weston, Hugo Boss France, and others. And um, you know, we're honored to have Hervé here today. And uh, you know, we've got people joining in on Zoom, joining in on Instagram Live, on Facebook Live, on LinkedIn Live, YouTube Live, and Twitter Live. So obviously, if you have any questions, feel free to chime in. This is gonna be a conversation. Uh, feel free to chat your questions and uh, I'll let Hervé take it from here. Hervé, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for the invitation, John. Of course. So share, share with us more about who you are your background, and obviously, you know, we'd love to jump into the amazing examples of your work, but just give us a sense for who you are and, and sort of, you know, what, what you've been doing in this industry. Um, so I'm working, actually, I am head of, of the visual merchandising department for Delvo. Um, and uh, before, uh, I used to work for GM Weston as a visual merchandising director. And before at Hugo Boss, where I stayed more than 10 years at Hugo Boss France and Europe in charge again of the visual merchandising. And actually at Delvo, uh, it's a team of five people and we are taking care of the image and all the windows, a product strategy for the store and all the pop-ups and the events. Beautiful, and, and how did you get into the industry? Talk to us about that. Um, I used to, before the visual, I used to work for Hermès and Ralph Lauren and um, people talked to me at Hugo Boss that they were looking for someone to help uh, to create a new visual merchandising department and I was interested and I, um, the, 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 the man who, uh, who, who did the interview uh, liked my, uh, my profile and I jumped in the company for 10 years. And I started like this. That's, that's amazing. Uh, and obviously, you know, uh, Rule's got your portfolio in the background on windowsware.com. Why don't you share with us some, some examples of your work? And I'm sure that will inspire, you know, more conversation around the things that, that you've been doing. Mm -hmm. Let's go to my first window at Hugo Boss. It was for the flagship store on the Champs-Élysées. And uh, yes, this one, the birds, yeah. Um, this area was dedicated uh, for, uh, it's a, it was a sales area. It was not a window first, but uh, it was a disaster because uh, nobody used to come here to, to shop. So my boss asked me to find a solution to, to have this uh, area more um, living. And I came up with this idea of, ha of having a Windows, an event window. And uh, this was the first window I created for Hugo Boss. Talk to us about the birds. Why, why all the birds and everything? Share with us that. 
because at, at that time the the ad campaign of Hugo Boss for the Boss Women collection was very um, Alfred Hitchcock feelings with a, a blonde mannequin in a very sophisticated uh, atmosphere, and uh, it reminds me the, the the actress of the birds in Alfred Hitchcock movie. Got it. And and talk to us about like you know how did you source those birds? Where did the birds come from? I mean, it's it comes. From uh, all the small birds came from um, a company who used to work for the cinema uh, in Paris, and the big one was uh, was made for a movie. So, uh, and and you said you currently have a team of five people. Uh, back then, I, I see this project is from two thousand and seven. Uh, what was the team like back then? Was it was it a bigger team, smaller team? Uh, two people. That's it. Oh, two me, people. Wow. One and me. Yeah. 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 And how long did it take to put something like that together? Two, two, three months. Wow, wow. And uh, so it was a success because it helps, it helps uh, to, to have traffic, more traffic. People stopped, people took pictures and it helps the store to, to have more um, customers traffic. A absolutely. So as it was a success, uh, we decided to go on with this window and uh, a lot of brands came to, to me to do a, um, a partnership or a, a collaboration. And that was, we did a window for uh, a brand um, and the washing machine, the new washing machine. So we did a, a windows with them at uh, Hugo Boss store. And, and talk to us about that. Were those actual washing machines, or did you? Uh... It's a real. Uh, it, it's a real uh, washing machines. It was the new models of the brand with the blue um, uh, door, totally new, and it was uh, in avant première at the Hugo Boss store. Wow. I mean, how did you put something like that together? You just uh, yeah. talk to us about that. Yeah, because uh, Style Guide is a magazine uh, for professional, and uh, we had an article about this window in this magazine. That's amazing. Uh, and, and how did you put that together? Just talk to us about that. I mean, that's just an amazing... Uh, I've never seen so many washing machines so closely together like that, and also so beautifully done. Uh, well, um, I had uh, a very good carpenters. Who, who used to work with me and uh, he installed all the machines and did the system to fix the machines uh, perfectly. Amazing. And was that just in the Paris store or were there others like that? It was just in the Paris store. It was just for the flex flagship store in Paris. And uh, this kind of event window helps really to talk about the windows, to have article in, the, in some magazines. So it was only in Paris. Yeah, absolutely. And obviously, you know, something like that, we would say is like a, a social media moment, you know, and I, I feel like you created that before, you know, there was really a, a high adoption in, in Instagram and social media. So I could totally see how not only is that something that, you know, magazines want to pick up, but, you know, anyone with a camera at that moment who would have had social media, I'm sure would have wanted to be in that installation as well. Exactly. And after this washing machine, we did another uh, a partner window with the Solex with, with the motorbikes. And uh, we came up with the ideas of the two mannequins and the great escape and the animals. Um, yeah, this is it. So the brand is Solex. It was a new one also. And the store was on Champs Elysees and we decided to do a, a collaboration with this kind of window. And talk to us about the animals uh, and and uh, the action there, yeah. Yeah, but it comes from, um, it's the same company who, do, who uh, used to rent a lot of materials for the cinemas and the, and the theaters. And they have a huge, huge uh, uh, building in Paris and you can find everything you want. It's oh, I see. It's kind of like a, a big uh, warehouse where you can sort of exactly. yeah, exactly. creatively find the things that you want to put together. Mm -hmm. So it was very fun to do it and people uh, loved it a lot, really. We had a lot of good feedbacks about this. 
And is that is that company still around? The one that you're talking about that uh, that you found all these resources yeah. from? Yeah, they still exist. Yeah. yeah. What are they called? Uh, Lanzani. Okay. And then, so uh, the, 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 this were, these were the three major uh, windows at Hugo Boss. And then at GM Weston, uh, my first window um, was to the launch of a collection called Le Moc. And this one, and it was my first window on the international level. It means that it was uh, dedicated for the international network. So these windows, uh, were everywhere in uh, Asia, China, US, uh, France, Europe. It was my first international window. And uh, at GM Western, it was the first time they had a window campaign. And uh, they did, uh, the, my position was created uh, at that time. Well, and can you talk to us about that transition? Obviously you were, uh, you know, doing windows for Hugo, Hugo Boss on the Champs-Élysées in Paris. Uh, one of a kind flagship store windows, and now you're uh, you're you're in a new role where you're you know creating uh, you know internet uh, a concept for you know stores internationally. Can you just talk to us about that yeah. transition for you? GM uh, Weston came to me uh, because they wanted to hire uh, someone to uh, develop the visual merchandising department because at that time the brand had nothing. And uh, I thought it was really interesting to uh, create everything from scratch for a beautiful brand like GM Western. So I created everything from the window, com the window campaign, from the different VM tools, um, the, in the store strategy, the everything was uh, an incredible experience to work like this from uh, the beginning. And That's this, amazing. And and when you said that nothing, is that like really they just put products in a store sort of thing without any strategy or? No, uh, each, st each store has their uh, feelings to put the products in the window. I see. The store. I see. There was no strategy, there were no guidelines, no, uh, the, all the network was not very uh, coherent and homogeneous. Got it, that makes sense, that makes sense. And it's beautiful. I mean, this is beautiful what you did. It's very clean, minimalistic, but very powerful. And, uh, and you could really see the, the full display of the colors there. Yeah. And thanks to this window, we had also some uh, good uh, article on the retail block design, retail design. Um, and it was a, a good uh, image for the brand and a good communication tool. Hervé, I have a question. Um, to match because I see that every stripe is matched to a shoe. Uh, how do you guys achieve that exact like, like matching? You know, it, it's a, a specific Pantone color that you guys kind of like work with the, with the vendor to produce. So it's exactly the same of the shoe. Do you send the shoe? Because it's perfectly like the same. It was a, a really hard work to find the right color fitting with the color of the shoe. And it was a very hard work with the, the, um, the vendor and the company who uh, I worked with, it took uh, like one month to find the right colors for the right color shoe. Yeah. I see. So, hey, I just want to highlight uh, uh, Natty Osis from Instagram is saying that uh, that's one of her favorite shoe window displays it, that she's ever seen. So congratulations on that. Thank you so much. Thank you. So one of the article we received from this window. Yeah. That's great. Um, yeah, and it's, it's not easy because at Hugo Boss, we used to have mannequins and pret-a-porter and accessories. So it was easy to create uh, an atmosphere. And the challenge here at GM Western, it's only shoes. So we have to, think different and to each time to find the right angle to showcase the new collection of the shoes. Absolutely. And this window with the cactus, it's a, a window and we won a prize at that time for this window. It's a Popeye Award. 
It's um, a global uh, retail marketing association. And each year they um, do a contest about the best windows. So you have a lot of categories like beauty, cosmetics. Uh, you have uh, people like uh, Chan uh, Chanel, Dior, Louis Vuitton. And that year we won the, the best windows for accessories. Oh, congratulations. What's your, uh, when you're, What's your 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 uh, your style? I mean, your your sort of uh, how what how's your thought process when you go into these uh, installations and uh, you know these concepts that you're creating? What sort of methodology do you use? Because I see similar themes, but then I also see things that are different. So, what kind of goes through your your mind as uh, you're thinking about this? Um... It depends on the brief I re I've received from the studio of the artistic director. And it's a good transition because this window, um, the, the creative team has asked, asked me to put the colors, um, more colors. That's why at GM Western at the beginning, it was full of colors. And then when they, ch then when they changed the, artistic, the artistic director, the new one wanted something minimalist. And if you see the next window, it's, it's less product and it's more quiet and it's more the brief I received from the artistic director. I see. Yeah, and, and, and uh, we've got Crofty2012 here on Zoom uh, saying, good evening from Milan, Italy. Uh, Crofty loved the washing machines. I, I love them too. Uh, and also the cactus, so congrats, yeah. Thank you so much. And if you go to the next window, it's a good transition uh, about what we said before. Holiday. Which one, Hervé? The, the, the pair of shoes and the letters inside the, the shoes with um, this one with the umbrella, yeah. So this one is totally different from the cactus, for example. It's because the new artistic director wanted something more quiet and, and more uh, sober. So this can, this idea of this kind of walking man with the umbrella, it's Mr. GM Weston with a, a white back wall. And what is that exactly uh, that, that makes up the figure of the person? What? It, uh, because uh, for the new artistic director, Jim Weston is a man who loves writing uh, and loves the uh, poems. So what you see here is the, the letters and words from a poem. And it's, wow. it creates a silhouette of the man, the man of Jim Weston. That's amazing. And, and that's really one of those installations that you really just have to, when you look at it from afar, you get the impression of the man, but then when you go up to it close, you get the, you get all the, the words that make up the poems. That's actually very beautiful. And next to it, you have the, 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 the book, the notebook to write the poems. So it was, yeah. So a totally different atmosphere from the other ones, but I received a different brief and I understood the, really what the new artistic director wanted to. And Hervé, were, were all of these, were these all international campaigns as well? Uh, yeah. I know that you mentioned the first one was, but that's all of these installations were, were all around the world. Is that right? Exactly, exactly. Got it. It's really cool stuff. And Which, yeah. uh, what do you want to go next, Hervé? Um, we can uh, we can go back to um, Jim Weston with the um, the store. Um, the pop up. This one, yeah, uh, Jim Weston store design. It's uh, I was I was Jim Weston at that time. And uh, my boss came to me and he said to me, oh, we, had, uh, we have an opportunity to have a pop-up store in Le Marais in Paris. We have to find an idea. And uh, I came up with this idea of this kind of atelier, um, this kind of savoir-faire of GM Weston. So I designed everything because 
they had nothing in the store. There was no floor. Uh, it was gray inside. Uh, so I designed the, um, the tables. I, I went to the archives and put some old uh, um, ad campaign. And uh, this store is supposed to be a pop-up and now it's a store concept. And it's been five years now that the store exists. Wow, congratulations. So this was a pop-up that became a store, like a permanent store. It became a permanent store, yeah. Wow, in the same place? It's the same place, yeah. That's great. So it's in the center of Le Marais and uh, it's a new concept for GM Western and it works so well that this concept was well, um, roll out in the shopping shop in Paris, like Guerrilla Lafayette and Le Printemps. I see. But first, it, it, it's supposed to be a pop-up store, but it works so well and people were so happy that it became a permanent store. And it's a, a good story. That's awesome. Yeah, it's beautiful. It doesn't look like a pop-up. It's just, it's beautiful that you guys were to adapt the, even the facade. Exactly, yeah, yeah. Let me show these images. When designing, when designing this survey, were you involved also kind of like in the, in the interior design, kind of like in the architecture stuff? Uh, I, I did everything inside, yeah. Wow. What are the difference between um, doing this and like what are the challenges that you face, for example, with this pop-up? Uh, because I will assume that you're used, a little bit used to kind of like do things in a specific space, kind of like a window. It's a space that at some point could be very kind of like safe because you're only looking in from like one angle. And then when you get into this, you know, you have you have a 360 view that the, the customer can go. Uh, so you, I, I don't know, I will assume that you have to be even more careful of like the ceiling has to be something exciting and the floor and the wall and even the cashier. What, are, what were one of your challenges that you faced when designing this pop-up? Uh, the challenge is the budget. I see. Honestly. Always. Yeah, always. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Perfect. We've got Olga Light from LinkedIn saying, awesome, creative, artistic works. Congrats. So thank, thank you, you, Olga. Thank you so much. Okay. And that's, and that's obviously why we love doing this stuff, right? Because you could never really gain these insights by just the images alone. It really takes uh, a little bit of a conversation to really bring the, what you see to life. Sorry? I said, that's why we love doing stuff like this because you know the images show one thing, but then to have you talk about it really helps to bring the project to life. Mm -hmm. I love it a lot, yeah. Okay, should we go over to the box? To the what? Which project do you want me to go? Um, but to um, uh, Delvo. Yes. With the, um, the small bags. It's my first window at Delvo. Not this one below. Below this one. Yeah. It's my first window at Delvo. Um, it's a window uh, specially made for Japan because okay. the specific uh, miniature bags. And it's uh, my first window. Uh, I did it uh, recently for them because I started at, um, at Delvo in February. Okay. And Hervé, talk to us about the transition uh, that you made uh, for, from JM Weston to Delvo. I, I know that you were there for, for a while and then, and then you just became head of visual merchandising uh, this year. Um, Delvo came to me because they wanted to, they wanted to have someone to, in their uh, visual merchandising department because the person left the company and uh, they saw my work at GM Western and they were interested uh, in my profile. So uh, we had meetings uh, with the brand and uh, I found the, the challenge very interesting uh, because Delvo is a very old uh, brand and it's the inventor of the handbag. It's amazing. It's interesting to work with this beautiful brand. Yeah. Yeah, and, and talk to us about this first window that you did. Um, it's it was for Japan because they launched these three bags. They launched um, in uh, exclusively in uh, in Japan for three months, and they wanted to have an event window, 
And uh, I had in my mind this uh, sumo world who carry the, the, small, uh, the small bags. Oh, they're so small. Wow. <laughs> Miniature bags. Yeah, exactly. Oh, it's wow. I had no, you had no perspective until you can see this and it could look like a small bag, like a purse. But when you see this, it's like, oh, this is insane. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. Thing. What can you put in those bags? It's a f oh, well, you put what you want, but it's more <laughs> small collection. Uh, each, each year, they'll go launch uh, a bag from a country. So you have the Belgium, you have uh -oh. the England, you have uh, uh, China. Uh, in uh, next month, it's, it's Paris. So you see you have different references. So I see. It's a collection. Yeah, it's a collection. I see. Which one is Paris? The French fries? No, it's for Belgium, the French fries. Paris, it's next month, and it will be more uh, Parisian with the, with the accordion. You see the... Yes. Oh, here's New York. Amazing. This is so fun. Is, is there any difference, uh, Herve, when you're working with like small products like this? You know, that you, it's not maybe easier, it's not as easy to catch people's attention when you have like a dress and a mannequin or something? It's true, and that's why uh, I wanted to play with the, the sumo, which is used to be very big and heavy, and the small bags. And it was uh, fun for me, and there was a twist with the small bags and the sumo who used to, to, to carry. And it's like a, a good uh, support, a showcase for these bags. Yeah, it's incredible. And talk to us about the, you know, you had transitioned and how long did it take to come up with this and execute it from when you first started working at the brand? Uh, they asked me in February to work on this. And at the end, we install it in uh, April. Wow, it's pretty quick. Yeah. OK. It's very cool. Should we go to them? And then it's a pop-up in Le Bon Marché. Uh, it's actually in Le Bon Marché. It's right now. Um, because Le Bon Marché uh, do a special uh, month for the Belgium. So as a Belgium brand, we have a, a specific area. And uh, we worked with a very famous cartoonist called Clark. And he... Thanks to the, um, to the drawings, he can tell the story of Delvo. And he did some bags also uh, with some cartoons on it. And um, with this pop-up, we, we show also the history of the brand with the old luggage, like these suitcases. And uh, yeah, it's, it's actually in Le Bon Marché in Paris. That's great. This this installation is live right now. Exactly. And how long is it going to be live for? Sorry? Do you know how, how long it's going to be uh, around for? Until when? Until uh, 18th of October. OK, so about three more weeks. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah, it's huge. It's great. It's huge, yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's also a video there below. Exactly, yeah. I can see. I can play a small part of it. video yeah beautiful it, it really helps us really see, we'll see this all space. these different images within the within the space exactly yeah 
So, Hervé, uh, as, as you were talking, uh, Nicole from Instagram wants one of the sumo wrestlers. Is that something that is possible? It can be possible, yeah. yeah, yeah. All right, Nicole, maybe you're going to get one. Maybe you have to go to Japan and buy one bag. It's smart. If you don't ask, you don't get, right? Exactly. <laughs> Any other project, Hervé? Oh, well, um... I did see the one with the, uh, it looks like a cupcake is smashing someone. That looks like a lot of fun. Oh, um, okay. The cake, yeah. Go down. Yeah, you see it? Yeah, it was for the spring summer collection. It was a Hugo Boss, yeah. And it's, um, yeah. It, it was at Hugo Boss, it was for summer collection. And with the team, at that time, we were four people and we wanted to do an homage to the Wizard of Oz. And instead of the house, it's a huge cake. Oh, I love that. That's so creative. And I love the colors that you use. The colors are so vibrant and uh, they work together so well. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So uh, uh, Natalie Osis uh, from Instagram uh, has a, a question comment for you. So one of the things that she likes the most is that brands allow you to display only one or a few products in the windows. Uh, you know, she's based in Chile and in Chile, they always think that if they display more, they will sell more. Um, in my experience, it's not true. No, yeah. uh, how can I say? Um, um, in my experience, we did a lot of, uh, we, we test a lot of things. And most of the time when the window is cleaner and the product is more, um, how can I say, showcase, it helps, um, it helps a lot. And it's, it's better than having a lot of things in the window, a lot of products, and the people don't get, don't see the, the products. Yeah. That makes sense. Uh, Nicole from Instagram is asking, do you, uh, do you have your own, uh, when you build all these props, and maybe you could talk about all the different brands that you've worked at, uh, do you build them yourselves? Like, do you have your own internal workshop, or do you hire uh, third-party uh, vendors or, you know, other resources to help uh, yeah. create? Yeah, vendor and company who are specialized in this uh, different project, yeah. Are there any ones that you have great experience with working that you really like that you think are have really done a great job for you and your team? Um, oh, there's a lot of uh, vendors, uh, very, very, uh, very good at their uh, at their work at their experience, and it depends on the project. For example, I don't ask uh, at the same people for a big cake or the people who do the, the stripes, it's a totally different company, and I know where to go uh, for my different project. I see. So at this point, you've developed like different resources for different things, and you sort of know, you know who to use for what. Exactly. That makes sense. Uh, so, and, and if you're on Zoom, you can feel free to unmute yourself as well. Uh, uh, let me just, or you could just, uh, you know, you could just type in the questions or the comments. So Crofty is mentioning, uh, I love the Hugo Boss bun. It's witty and it communicates fun with a little bit of dark humor to it. It creates a, it creates proper storytelling. And I, I agree with that. If somebody has questions, please, this is the time. It's getting late in Paris. <laughs> I mean, look, uh, Hervé, talk to us about the, you know, uh, the, sh the, the Bon Marche, right? Because this is, from all these projects, it seems like this is the one that you're working for the brand, but it's in another store, right? It's Le, Le Bon Marche. Can you talk to us about that experience? And are you going to continue to do that with Delvo or, you know, continue with, with their own uh, stores? Uh, 
so Le Bon Marché, it's a department store in Paris, and yes. Delvaux has already uh, a store inside. And this pop-up is uh, in another in another location in the store. So we have two actually we have we have two shopping shops, the existing store and this one. I see. Very nice. And it's the Bon Marché who asked the brand to do something. So if they want, so they can ask us to do uh, another pop-up for uh, another event. And uh, Herve, for, for Natalie's question, and, and you, you you answered it, but uh, you know about you know in Chile they just think that they just have to put as many products uh, you know on display as possible. Uh, do you have any like metrics or any any guidance as far as you know? I, I know that you mentioned that you do a lot of internal research, but any any sense of any direction that maybe you could provide her that way when she communicates to her. Her team, uh, she could at least cite a, an example of, uh, you know, of, of how effective it, it, it is to sh essentially show less product. Oh la la, it's difficult to answer like this. <laughs> I see. Um, we, our job is, is to drive the customer eye. So we have to find a way to drive the, the eye of the customer in the window on the product we want to sell. That's the, that's the main focus. So she has, she has to think about how, how to drive the, the eye. Yep. So we had a, uh, we had a, uh, a conversation this morning with a, with a student group uh, from SCAD, Savannah College of Art and Design. And one of the, one of the students asked, uh, how can you create window displays for TikTok? For the TikTok, uh, you know, the, the Gen Z, the, uh, you know, this generation that's very much on social media. How, how do you think about uh, when you come to the design of stores and windows and all these uh, amazing visual experiences? How do you, how do you uh, think about uh, social media and, and especially apps like TikTok that are really becoming, uh, uh, heavily used by the most current generation of consumers. So the question is what I think about, about TikTok. How, how is our, our social media apps in any way changing the way that you think about design uh, for your windows or stores or, or do you just have the, a, a similar view that if it's just vi great and visual, it's going to naturally be on social media. Are you, designing spaces with social media in mind or are you just designing spaces because you know it, it's once it's an amazing space it's going to be on social media I'm just curious to, to know how you you think about that because obviously a lot of different brands have different perspectives and a lot of the creatives also have different perspectives as far as how they think about uh, you know this new digital age but of course we think about it. We, we think about having the, the windows or the design on the, on the social media for sure. But first the mission is to have a, an experience in the store. It's the first mission. And after, if we can have this experience uh, translate on the social media, it's perfect. Got it. So Natalie, Natalie says, thanks with uh, like three exclamation marks. Uh, that you try to really help uh, answer, uh, at least comment on it, because she's mentioning that it, she's just she has this fight with her uh, team, uh, and just try to she's going to try to share your feedback to just try to get them uh, to where you know where she needs them to be. So appreciate uh, you highlighting that. I've got hello. I've got a question. Yes. Hello, I've got a question. It's Lara, here's Crofty. I've got a question for Hervé. Hello, Hervé. Um, so I would like to ask him, um, is vision uh, of the future for window design, uh, especially uh, facing the, this new normal that we are already facing after this pandemic? As in, uh, you know, everybody's talking about how stores will lose their power because everything will become digital. So online shopping is already very popular. 
So I wanted to ask him, how does he feel about his role as a window designer? And how does he feel that coronavirus and the pandemic will impact his role in the future? Uh, it's a subject we are discussing actually. Uh, it's, it's a bit new, huh, in fact, uh, since, uh, since March. So it's something we are discussing in the company actually, but in the same time, um, we realized that uh, people uh, need to have a link with the brand, so digital and physically in the store. So I think some, I think something will stay in the store also. I mean, we have to, we have to work together with the digital, but not against it, I think. Thank you. So it won't, you know, our profession, it won't die, at least it will survive. <laughs> okay, yeah. And, and Crofty, do you mind sharing more about, about yourself as well to just give us context for, uh, you know, how you're thinking about it? Yeah, sure. Um, well, I'm based in Italy now, but I worked uh, for 19 years in London as a, as a display artist. So I work with different companies uh, in the UK. As a, as a display artist. So I was actually making the props for a lot of stores um, and, you know, working with, you know, other artisans and doing the installation in, within the store. So uh, I've been back uh, to, to Italy uh, since 2017 and I've got a little brand now for paper eyes. So I'm actually a paper artist. So I work with paper a lot. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. So, but, you know, I found it quite different um, in the way that, you know, I think in the Italian uh, market, um, especially in window displays, is completely different from the British market or from the French market. So I like to see what goes on around the world, also to keep myself uh, informed and updated about the trends and about how, uh, you know, the reaction of, you know, different customers and the customer experience is uh, influenced by the cultural sides of uh, one country. Um, and obviously how people spend money and how people see, you know, the commerce, um, you know, how to spend the money in store. But obviously now we are facing a diff you know, different scenario with, um, you know, with, with this year, especially with the, you know, with the um, um, emergency that we had. So I'm just really, you know, really curious to see, you know, what people think about uh, what it will be for the future. Yeah. And that's, I mean, that's a great perspective and great question. And, Look, we've, uh, with Windows Wear, we've got so many students that we work with and we constantly do presentations with the students and all the students love all the physical display stuff, you know, because once you build something, you can take millions of photos of it, but then, you know, with social media, it's the opposite, you know, it, it, it disappears within a minute or, or an hour oh. or a day, whereas like display, it actually, it actually has some like longevity to it. It has authenticity to it. And obviously, you know, you can you can create one display, and it can be shared by millions and millions and millions online, uh, and really engage with it. Uh, so, from that perspective, you know, I think a lot of the students that we're talking with, who are you know just entering this field, they're they're seeing it from a different perspective because all they're used to is social media, and then they're like, ah, like their their eyes are open with uh, with. Uh, uh, with all this visual merchandising, and maybe you know maybe people that have been in the industry. For, for many years have a different perspective because they never grew up with the social media. Uh, but, but they're definitely converging. Uh, and, uh, I, but I will tell you a lot of the students that we talk to are very excited about this industry, especially when it comes to things like augmented reality and virtual reality, uh, where you could really elevate the, 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 the visuals to really engage digitally. So, but, that's, uh, but I appreciate your, your question and, and your perspective. Thank you, John. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you uh, very much. Yeah. I think we have, Hervé, I think that, I mean, it's been, been fantastic. And this, this hour has whizzed by. Uh, I think we have time for one more question. If anyone has one last question or comment, uh, and, and if anyone does, feel free to chat or, or chime in. And, uh, you know, definitely appreciate, Hervé, all, all the insights that you shared with all the projects. And, and that's obviously... Uh, you know, what we love doing, we, we love to see, uh, you know, so much history in, in, in projects and also, you know, spending time going through them with you uh, is also very uh, inspiring and valuable. It was a pleasure, really. 
beautiful work. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Cool. Well, well thank you everyone again. And uh, you know, this video will be on the same exact uh, event link uh, that we had shared for the presentation. And, and obviously uh, Hervé's profile is on Windowsware and we look forward to continuing to showcase your work on Windowsware. And uh, you know, we, like I mentioned to you before, when you first joined, this will not be the, the only time we do this with you. We, we look forward to inviting you back uh, to one of these windows where live sessions where we can, uh, you know, we can go through other other projects that you're working on and other other examples. But very much appreciate everyone who's who has been joining us here today, and and thank you again, uh, Hervé, for uh, taking the time to uh, share all this with us. Thank you so much for your invitation. It was a really Alrighty, everyone. Thank you, and thank you, uh, thank Claymore you. Hamilton, for your your comments too. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye.